Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. We are proud to offer this series. We have funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded, thank goodness, because I go back and watch Emily later sometimes, and they're made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I'm Martha Brown, your host for today's activities, and I'm tickled to present Emily Corbin showing us how to move to heal. Emily, we want you to show us how to sweat a little bit and get our bodies working. Okay, well, good morning. I'm happy to do that. Um, just want to point out the, the Zen creature that I brought with me here. I um, I placed a, a mat down there to put my feet on and she just popped right on. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, let's get started. Um, first thing you're going to do is sit upright in a chair, bring your feet to the floor. We want our shoes off. We want the bottoms of our feet to feel the surface of the floor underneath if it's not too cold. Um, so get yourself all situated. I'm working to get us some music here. And the first thing you're going to do is just start to sense uh, what's going on in your body, right? So uh, as you land here in this moment, it's um, no matter what holiday you celebrate, this time of year um, can be hectic, busy for a lot of us. And so I just invite you to sense the energy that you brought into this moment, right? If you're feeling at ease, then that's maybe the energy that you observe. And if you're feeling excited, that's a different kind of hectic energy, right? There's me, but the music, I don't know. I'm getting a hectic energy situation here or a music situation. Uh, but anyway, let's come back to sensing our breath. So as you move your breath in and out, can you start to make some sound in the back of your throat? So close your eyes so that your awareness goes inside and begin to sense and see with your eyes closed. So that sound that we're making with our breath is an activation of the muscles in the neck and the back of the throat. It's not a constriction so much as it is uh, an awakening, right? So as you inhale, there's a sound like the ocean. And same thing when you exhale. A sound like the ocean. And allow your breaths to be very slow and smooth, filling completely in and then emptying completely out. And then what do you notice about your lung volume today? Do you notice that, yeah. So maybe giving it a score on a scale of one to 10. If one is needs a lot of work, right? Need to improve and expand the lung volume a lot. 10 is, wow, I don't think I could increase my lung volume anymore. And where are you? I noticed today I'm a six. So give yourself that awareness. Where do you notice that you are? And then what do you notice about your body that you could just say inside of your mind right now? I notice a little tightness in my neck, my shoulder. I notice ease in my spine, right? So these observations can be anything, right? Can 
be any type of sensation, any type of body awareness is what you're connecting to. Good. Continue your breathing. I will make a last attempt at getting us some tunes. I think I'm having some kind of a connectivity issue, which is par for this morning's course. <laughs> um, and you stay grounded and connected. Perhaps Martha's wise words that we need a meditation this morning were a little bit of a premonition, yes? Yes, a foreshadowing. A foreshadowing, yes. All right. So it looks like the music is not going to happen. But we are happening, right? So whenever we're without the music to align our movement, what are we left with? We're left with the sounds in the room and the sensations inside of the body. We're left with the rhythm of the heart, right? That's with us whether we have additional music or not, right? So bring your fingertips anywhere within your body where you know you can sense your heartbeat. Right, so maybe it's to your chest. Maybe it's to the side of your neck. Maybe your wrist. Okay, so as you begin to connect with awareness of your heartbeat, See if you could start to slow it down. How do we do that? Slow your breath. Let your exhale be longer than your inhale. Quite a bit longer. Good. So release your hands from wherever they are. Let your palms rest up with the backs of the hands on your thighs. And just get nice and tall here. Now, if your feet are bare, notice what's underneath your feet. If it's a carpet, what's the texture like? And if it's a hard floor, what is the temperature like? And then go even more into that, get more detailed. Do you notice that certain parts of your feet are touching the floor and other parts are not? Good. And then notice the arch of your foot, right? There's maybe a little bit of space or even just less pressure between your foot and the floor. Good. And then notice the ball of the foot, all of the toes, and then the heel. Good, we'll lift one foot up and just sense the foot in space and all of the space around the foot. And then exhale, place it back down on the floor. Nice. Same thing with your other foot. Let's lift it up. Sense the space all around and then take your foot back to the floor. Nice, all right. And then lifting the arches of the feet only, right? So not lifting the feet themselves. It's an awareness in the arch of your feet. Can you begin to sense your heartbeat in the arches of your feet? Maybe you do and maybe you don't. But you could imagine sensing your heartbeat in the arches of your feet. Nice. And then from here, let's begin to find some movement in the shoulders, right? So inhaling and preparing, maybe lifting a shoulder. And then whenever you're going to create space, right? The exhale <sighs> happens with letting go or with effort, right? So if I'm going to lift my arm up, I'll use the exhale to lift. And if I'm going to release my arm down, 
I'll let that happen with my exhale too. Good. So let's keep working through the shoulders one at a time. Good. Completing one more on each side. And then let's work with some palm direction. So right now, palms are up. Doesn't matter if your arms are out far away from your body or close. Just notice that your palms are up. And then notice that one palm is down. Doesn't matter which one. Take that palm back up. Take the other palm down. Both palms are up again. Nice. And both palms press down by your side. Good. So now with one palm reaching down by your side, the other palm reaches up. The palms are now reaching in opposite directions. So bend your elbows with your inhale here. So you'll see my elbows get bendy when I inhale and then exhale. Push the heels of the hands way up and way down, right? In opposite directions. Keep pushing your feet into the floor as well. Good, your next inhale, you're gonna draw your hands through the center. Yeah, they touch real close to each other, almost touching. And then exhale your next breath out, the heels of the hands reaching up in the other direction. Good. Take a nice big breath here, expanding, and exhale to pass your hands through the middle. Good. Just let your, your fingertips touch at your heart space, relax the hands, except for that they're leaning towards each other. And then sense what you activated in the forearms, the shoulders, just taking a little pause. Okay, so we're moving that same movement, the other side, yeah, maybe it's the side you started on, reaching one heel of the hand up and the other down passing them through the middle and switching to the other side. Good. So let's do it a little faster. Nice. All right. So let's come back to our starting place with our palms up and in close to the body, elbows, your wings are close to your body. Good. And then I notice my shoulders are a little closed off there, a little tension in my shoulders. So when I notice that, I'm reminded that I have to ah, lift up and open the heart space, right? So relax the shoulders down, keeping the chest nice and open. Good. And then from here, I can play with palm directions again, just right here. I'm switching. So it seems so simple, right? It's a thing that we've been doing our whole lives, right? Making one hand go this way and another hand go that way. But when we practice this movement at the same time as we're mindful of it, both in our mental awareness and with our eyes, watching and knowing what we're doing, we strengthen neural pathways that facilitate our moving and knowing where our bodies are in space, right? Good, release your hands back down, nice. Okay, proprioception, right? One of, one of our favorite words in Nia is proprioception. Say it with me, go, are you all muted? We can talk today. <laughs> we can talk today. Proprioception. Yes, thank you, Martha. I bet you were a good student. <laughs> I was always a teacher's pet. <laughs> ah, I knew it somehow. Good. So if if I tell you to lift one of your feet, right? And you lifted your foot. Well, pretty basic, right? Most people can lift their foot and know that their foot is lifted, but, but do we take that for granted, right? And if I ask you to lift your foot and move it away from your body, right? Maybe you press your heel away, or maybe you reach it 
way over on the side of the room and way back again, right? That is a skill. And we can hone that skill. So keep lifting one foot and reaching it away from the body and then bringing the foot back in, placing it back down. And what you're executing here, when you lift the knee, extend the heel, bring the heel back in and press the foot down, right? So it's up, out, in, down, up, out, in, down. When you do it fast, up, out, in, down up, up, in, down. It's a kick, right? And so you can kick, <laughs> but the first thing you have to do is know where you're moving your foot in space and go through it nice and slow. <sighs> nice. So let's try again and make the kick soft. It's slow and soft. Up, out, in, down. Almost like a whisper of a kick. Same thing the other side. Up, out, in, down. And notice the different energy when you yell, right? So now give it a yelp. And maybe it's like you're sitting in the back seat, your parents are driving. No, your brother is in the front seat right in front of you, and you kick his chair because he's annoying you. And you're like, hey, hey. And he goes, mom. And you go, oh, and you kick him on the other side, right, with your other foot. That's a different kind of energy from that lift out in down, right? Can we notice the different energies there, right? There's that playful kind of mischievous energy and it's fast and striking. And then there's that soft dancing kind of graceful energy, right? They're both a kick. They just have two different kinds of energy. Same thing with punches, right? So when I bring my arm to the ready position, right, the arms are in. Let's say I want to reach for something and then pull it back to me, right? If I reach and pull back with the other arm at the same time, I'm gonna give myself more forward motion and my belly, I can harness that power that's in my belly and use it for the forward motion of my fist. Good, nice. Now, but let's keep it soft, right? We're being playful. And the other side. So there's this rotation of the arm when you make the fist and reach the arm out. And you wanna be able to feel that your upper arm muscles contract right there at the last minute. So all of the power of your punch is happening right there where you need it to happen. Good. Now, let's notice the difference between like that soft, playful kind of reaching, right? Versus big brothers in the front seat, right? Good job. <laughs> yes, that's it. Who has brothers? I don't even have a brother, but you guys, Somebody here brother. does, I can tell. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <brother>. Nice. <laughs> All right. So what about the energy of spiraling? Right? Okay. So this is an energy that's kind of in between that playful, very soft energy, right? The energy of spiraling can get big, but it can also get really small, right? All right, so notice all of the ways you can spiral in your body, right? 
your neck, your spine, amazing. I've got some kitty cats running around here that can do some pretty spirally types of things. Yeah, good. And then what about just one finger? Okay. What about the next finger? Okay, let's point them down at the ground so we don't, you know, create any offensive gestures. All right. And then your middle finger. Yeah, definitely down towards the ground. All right. And then your pointer finger. Okay, so now that we're coming to the pointer finger, right, or the index, let's use the index finger to point to what we want, right? So you could do it literally. Uh, there's a glass of water. I want that, right? You could do it more figuratively. I want to go there someday, right? So notice the difference in your body between pointing something you can actually reach out and touch and you have the intention of going and getting, right? And then something that's maybe less tangible, more abstract, or just in the future. Nice, okay. Now what happens when you point to something and then you look at it? Okay, do it with the other hand. So point first, then look. Nice. Okay, one more exercise using this pointing and looking. The first thing we're gonna do is look with our eyes without moving the head. Okay, so let your hands rest down on your thighs. Good, relax your shoulders. <sighs> now, look to the left side of the room without moving your head. Nice. And then look towards the center. Look up without moving your head. And then back towards the center. Look to the right. Keep your head still. Nice. And then look down. Nice. Back to the center. Now we'll move our heads when we look, okay? So looking, let's look up and then look down and then center, nice. Look to the right and back to the center and to the left and back to the center. Good. So you just did an amazing proprioception exercise and I feel smarter, I don't know about you, but I feel like my neurons are really firing right now. <laughs> so we'll work now on some spinal um, softening, right? Some softening of the fascia, loosening of the fascia around the spine. So we need to inhale, roll our shoulders up and exhale, release them down, get nice and tall in the seat. And then with your exhale breath, just soften your chin toward your chest. With your inhale breath, reach the chin up towards the ceiling. Exhale, chin reaches to chest. So we'll take a few like this. I'll let you do your own counting, your own timing. As we inhale, the chin reaches. And as we exhale, the chin moves down. And the next time your chin comes down to your chest, just let it stay there. Now I want you to see if you can relax your jaw here. Relax your jaw and then you want to feel a little bit of a tug with the weight of your head pulling down, 
but also you feel that your spine is opening a bit here between the shoulders. Good. So with your next breath in, let your left ear reach towards your left shoulder and begin to let your right ear reach up towards the sky. Nice. Take a full breath here, just letting your right shoulder release away from your right ear. Let your jaw relax. So some space in your jaw here would be great. Your next inhale breath, you'll bring your chin back up to neutral. And then your next exhale breath, your chin comes back towards your chest. Inhale as you roll the right ear towards the right shoulder. And now the left ear is reaching up. Nice. Let your right arm really release down, be heavy, and let your jaw relax. Lots of space as you breathe into that left edge of your neck. Nice. Full breath here. And then as you inhale, you can bring your chin back up to neutral. Good. Working with moving the arms here. So we'll do a little bit of kind of puppeteering type work with the arms, right? So if you had puppets, and I'm sure if a puppeteer was watching this, they would say, you're doing it all wrong. Right, but for our purposes, this is the right way. Yeah, the elbows stay up. Yeah, and the arms are pretty relaxed, except for the forearms holding. Yeah, good, nice. Okay, now what happens if you release your elbows down? Okay, bring them back up again. And then from this space, you can start to open the chest, good. Now feel your elbows squeezing towards each other, right? But they can't, can they? Could they touch? Yeah? Almost like you could squeeze a pencil right down the muscles of your back in between, yes, your shoulder blades, beautiful. Good. And then release your arms back down. Nice. Okay, so just take a moment breathing and sensing all of the muscles that you activated in your arms. So, what do you notice? Nice. And then bringing the arms back up again. Good. Peeling one arm open to the back. Right? And can you sense that there's a place there where, okay, I don't want to move my shoulder anymore. It doesn't feel safe. Right? And especially if you drop your elbow down then you put a lot of pressure uh, in not so great a way on your shoulder joints. So keeping that elbow up, right? And then if you want to keep the elbow out, but then bring it down a little bit, that would work. Okay, good. So if the elbow is out, then other side, let's reach it all the way to the back. And notice that starts to twist you over just a bit. Good, come back towards the center. When you're ready, just give yourself a big hug, crossing the arms in front of your body and then just taking fingertips to the backs of your shoulder blades. Whatever you can reach is just fine. So when you inhale, everything kind of shrugs up towards your ears. And when you exhale, just let it all kind of melt down. Nice, so let's do that again. Good. And then just rest here for a moment, sensing where do you feel the opening in the back of your body here? Relax your neck and your jaw. When you're ready, inhaling, drawing the shoulders open, elbows come apart. Extend your arms all the way out and wiggle through the tips of each finger. You can flex your wrists up and down. Good, and then extend through your fingers again. 
And then take the arms across the body again, but this time the other arm is on top. Yeah. I don't know about you, but every time I go, is this right? Yeah. <laughs> and then interlace or reach onto the backs of your shoulder blades here. And when you inhale, you'll notice that shrug. And when you exhale, <laughs> let it go. Good. So I exaggerate that, but you don't have to. You can just notice that that subtle movement is happening with every breath. And then just rest here for another solid breath. When you're ready, let's release our arms back down. Wiggle through your fingers just a bit here. Okay, coming back to the fingers, just something cool for you to notice. When you do lift your arm out like this, notice what happens when you move your pinky finger, right? So there's this subtle activation up the entire arm and into the tricep, just when you engage the pinky, right? So anytime that you're moving all of the digits of your hand, you are activating the muscles that move up the entire arm and all of the brain cells that are related as well. So remember, we've talked about before how let's do it with the other side. Move that pinky finger. Okay, now what happens when you close your eyes and move the pinky finger? Okay, good. Remember that just envisioning that you're moving these muscles in your body creates the neural framework, right? The foundations in your brain for that movement. Good, and then release it back down. Nice. So is it possible for us to use that in our kicking, right? Ooh, little snap, crackle, pop there, <laughs> right? So can we envision, you know, when you go to a carnival and you throw a ball at the dunking, uh, what is it called, the dunk tank? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so imagine you're throwing a ball at the dunk tank and, and whatever this person has done to you that you want to think, boy, they deserve it, okay? Can you imagine that you're going to hit that dunk tank with your heel instead of with the ball, right? <laughs> so it's like a strike, strike with your heel. All right, good. And then bringing the power of your belly into that, right? So notice all the things that happen in your body just to stabilize you when you lift your foot. Just notice that, that your belly got strong and activated. Lift taller through the crown of your head just to stay here. Let your middle fingers point down to help stabilize. Good. And now just a little, doesn't have to be big. Good. And then place that foot back down. So when you target that power, right, it doesn't have to be a big aggressive punch or kick or movement. If you target your power specifically, <laughs> nice. All right, so bring, bring your other foot back up. So we're working on the second side now. Bring your foot back up and just stay here for a moment. You're pressing the non-lifting foot into the ground and the lifted foot is just ready, right? Ready. But then notice the readiness in your body. Notice your belly. Lift through the crown of your head. Be awake in your chest, enthusiastic in your spirit. Good. And then go for it. Dunk them. <laughs> nice. Okay, do it again. <laughs> All right. Can we do the same thing with our punch? But we're gonna keep the punch really close to the body. <laughs> nice, all right. What about a block, right? So we have done lots of 
moving the arms across the body. Yeah. Upward block. And we have this beautiful rotating muscle or bone rather in our forearm. Nice. Now, this can look a lot of different ways. We can bring that energy of force, right? That Taekwondo energy, ha, ha. Or we can bring this very soft, flowy energy, right? Let's play with the two. So let's start with our flowing. And it might flow off into the other side of the room. Right? And then bring it closer in. Nice. Beautiful agility work there. Ha. Ha. Nice, let's do it again. Ha. Ha. So the stop start of that, the ha. Ha. is so good for your body's ability to be caught by surprise and handle it, right, effectively. All right, so let's come back to that flowing. Notice the contrast. We're flowing, <laughs> feels really good. But then there's something that feels really good about ha, 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 ha. Nice. nice. You're using your breath beautifully. Nice. And then come back to that spiraling middle. And Let's move into the back of our chair, work on some spinal rolling here. So remember we look up and reach forward with the chin as we hinge forward with the spine. And then the chin drops and curls toward the chest as you start to round up and come way back up. So notice everything that's happening in your belly here to stabilize you, right? Because if the belly was not activated, if you weren't pushing your feet into the floor and activating the muscles of your thighs, you would just fall out of your chair, right? <laughs> so let's reach the chin back up again and then reach it forward. And then you start to round and bring the chin to the chest as you start to push into the floor, come back up. Nice. We're gonna go the other way now. So we're gonna look down to go down. So now the chin comes down towards the chest and then the crown of the head follows and reaches down. And then I look up to go up. Nice. Right. And sense the muscles in the thighs activating to keep your feet grounded the whole time. All right, let's do it again. Look down to go down. Meow. Look down to go down. Look up to go up. <laughs> We're staying up, look up to go down, I'm sorry. And look down to go up. Good. Coming back deeper into your chair, we're going to take a little figure four stretch or pigeon stretch. So it might feel good to have a pillow behind your back here. And if not, if you can sit really straight and keep your sit, your sit bones grounded in your chair, nice and tall, right? And then keeping your foot active here. The bottom foot is pressing into the floor. And you can start to look for that same spinal undulation that we were working with. So 
So looking down to go down, looking up to go up and kind of alternating the two as it feels good to you. So if this opening in our spines, right, this mobility and flexibility and kind of a hydrating and loosening of the fascia around the spine is the medicine, if that's what we're going for, then you are kind of mixing your own prescription here, right? So lifting your chin when it feels right to do it that way and then dropping your chin when that feels right. And then instead of following some external instruction, you're really following your own internal guide. Your body's awareness of what is healing in this moment. Nice. So you have the structure of the spinal roll. What happens when you start to get a little more playful with that structure? or you begin to feel comfortable enough to explore leaning in one way or another, taking a pause where it feels good and exhaling into that space. When you're ready to explore further, you can move somewhere new, right? So some of you may enjoy a little twist here. You might enjoy reaching out, yeah? And then letting the arms come inside of your knee. So my left arm is coming inside my left knee. And then I'm just gonna peel open here and look up. So it's important to stay grounded in the seat and let the twist happen in the rib cage, right? So don't push yourself, right? Only honoring what your body's way is today and breathing all the while. When you're ready, you can begin to release back towards the center and this time will go the other way. So your right arm coming to the outside of your left knee and then beginning to peel open like a bow. You're drawing your arrow back, setting your sights on what you desire and then going after it. Use your breath. When you're ready, release your chest back toward the center and begin to rise up. We'll just lift the right leg and extend it out, bend it and straighten it a couple of times here. Just sensing the knee joint. You can even circle the hip a little one way and a little the other way. And then bring your foot to the floor. And let's move into the other side. So crossing that leg into the figure four, getting nice and tall, grounding down through that right foot. And again, if you had a pillow behind you and you're working with that, keep it going. Offer yourself a symmetrical experience. Getting nice and tall here, and then working with that spinal roll. And you'll notice that this left hip maybe feels very differently than your right. Um, your body, even though we offer this symmetrical practice, we have to honor that the body is not symmetrical. Mm -hmm. right? Our experiences, are not symmetrical, our lives are not symmetrical. And all of those things show up in the body. So again, looking for how you can honor what shows up. 
And then let's reach forward with our inhale. And then exhale, let your arms drop in front. Good. And from here, you've got your right forearm pressing into the right knee. And begin to apply a little bit of pressure there in order to inhale and open to the left, stacking and lifting through the right arm and shoulder. That's the left arm lifting, yes, sorry. <laughs> and breathing. When you're ready, you can inhale, bring it back through the center. Exhale into the middle. And when you're ready to inhale again, open the other way. Remember that you're drawing your shoulder away, but keep awareness in that elbow. Like the puppet master, you're the puppet master of this experience the whole time. Yeah. And then when you're ready, bring your arms back down and raising up. We'll extend through the left leg, bend and straighten, do what feels good. Yeah, and then bring the foot to the floor. How about a little rumble? So in Nia, one of the things that's so beautiful about this practice is that we embrace all of the opposites, right? We embrace these very rumbly kind of experiences. And then we embrace these soft and flowy kind of experiences. And the body loves all of that variety, right? The form and the freedom. So now just bring your palms to your thighs, let your feet rest on the ground, sit nice and tall. And sense all the energy moving through the lower leg. And Sense the energy of your heart. And then as you take this next breath in, become aware of a place in your body where you're healing. Right? We're all healing all of the time. It doesn't mean that there is sickness necessarily. Mm. Something that you're healing anywhere. And say it to yourself, now I am healing. Good. And then as you're breathing here, sense where you feel strong. Where you sense resilience and power. And then imagine that that healing energy is moving into all of the edges of you. Every single bit of you that's strong and powerful and sturdy and resilient. It's sharing and spreading that resiliency everywhere it needs to go. Let's take a hand to our heart and a hand to our belly. So there is a a prayer that my husband and I said at our wedding, and I only say it a few times a year, um, but we're celebrating moving into a new year soon. And we always say namaste at the end of a yoga practice. And this prayer really embodies what that means. I honor the place in you in which the entire universe dwells. 
I honor the place in you that is of life, of love, of truth, and of peace. I honor the place in you that when you are in that place in you, and I am in that place in me, there is only one of us. And so it is. Namaste, friends. Namaste. <coughs> Namaste. Namaste, Happy New Year, friends. Happy New Year, yes. Year. <coughs> no music. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. da, 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 da. Perfect. <coughs> Yes, perfect for so, all of us. Thank you so much. Oh, you're Woo. welcome. Yeah, and I even okay. still got a little dewy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it can happen. It can be surprising how much these really little subtle movements can can get you going. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know I went I went way over today, but when I don't have my music, I have no concept of time, and I can't yeah. see any clocks. So I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. We didn't Thank abandon you. you. You're fine. Fine. <laughs> I do appreciate that. Yes. Oh, you bet, Miss Emily. And we will see you every Thursday in 2022, right? Yay. Yes. 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 <laughs> well, looking here at the purple, we see Emily Corbin for today and mm -hmm. tomorrow. Drum roll. Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. We're going to rank out <laughs> 2021 with Jeopardy. And then next week, we start all over with a regular week. Oh, we're going to have uh, uh, cookie conversations next week. Oh, great. Yes, yeah. oh, yeah, so be prepared to be here. It will be wonderful. And what day? Fun. I believe it's Tuesday. Let's look. Okay. Let's look. <coughs> ah, cookies Tuesday, January 4th. All right. Yes. It always helps when you know when to look for cookies. That's right. <laughs> and she said she thought she might do something bread-like because okay. we've all been eating sugar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good, good. Smart. Say, uh, I have I have a quite a few cookies already that Myra made, so I have to work through them. Well, I bet so. <laughs> yeah, and you, you know, if you get tired of them, Don, you yeah. call me. Oh, <laughs> sure. right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody have oh, anything they want to share before we go? No. Nope. I was just going to say, Don and Myra, I really enjoyed reading that article. Oh, great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Martha sent it to me, and I just loved reading that. It was Good. Thank thank you. You great. Much. We're doing wonderful things. Oh, I saw this morning that James L. West is going to ad ad extend their day program. They have bought or leased the Rose Cottage building that's over uh -huh. by Harris Southwest. Okay. It's like a mile from my house. It's, uh, on, it's the next block over from Harris Hospital Southwest. Mm -hmm. so they're expanding their day program for the Southwest part of the area in case right. you know someone that needs it. Good. It's a wonderful Sweet. building. I'm glad they did it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you all. Namaste, Thank you. Emily. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're so See you all tomorrow. Yeah. See you next year.